Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about which is better, if you should be living with debt or living debt free. Now, what we mean by this, and Kirby, I know you're going to go more into detail, but you're referring to Robert Kiyosaki's method versus Dave Ramsey's method. Right, so with Robert Kiyosaki's method, obviously not paying taxes is his highlight you know not paying income taxes and in order to do that it seems like you need a lot of debt in order to do depreciation and you know have those interest payments and stuff whereas dave ramsey everything is completely paid off and those tax hits might be a little bit bigger but what were you thinking of on this topic um the thing is is neither one is wrong dave ramsey is not wrong or robert kiyosaki is not wrong when dave ramsey talk about debt and, and i remember this when dave ramsey talks about debt he's talking about consumer debt i was just, that's what he's always talking about he's saying don't go into debt for cars don't go into debt for vacations don't go into debt for uh you know store cards and buying all your wants and things like that but he does have the caveat of going into debt for the house that you live in. He do say pay cash for rental properties, but he's okay with going debt for because it's a big payment for the house that you live in. When Robert Kiyosaki talks about debt, he's talking about debt on assets. So they're talking about two different landscapes of it. Now, don't get it confused. I mean, I understand what Dave Ramsey is is talking about and again that goes with financial literacy because they both just label debt and debt and debt and they think you're talking about the same thing to the layman out there who doesn't know the difference of what they're talking about they're saying oh Robert Kiyosaki said you can go in debt Dave Ramsey said you can't go in debt and then in America with over 1.3 trillion dollars in credit card debt and a national debt over you know like 32 trillion dollars and then you got student loan debt over a trillion dollars that's all people know is debt, debt, debt. So when they when they talking about it, you got to understand the difference and the nuances of it. Um, William Ramsey, when he when he talks about living debt free, living debt free, I mean it's it's a great idea, it's a great concept. I mean I've done it. That's baby step six. I always say I don't get to seven because. I don't want people to think I'm a charity case and just gonna go out there and hand out money, but I've made it all the way through all the baby steps. And the thing is, is people have this idea of, oh, once you have debt, once you have no more debt, there's no more payments. Once you pay off your house, there's no more payments. You own it free and clear. It's not true. When you own a house and you have no debt, you still have more money to pay for you know, maintenance, maintenance costs, and you won't have to use your emergency fund for that. Uh, you will have, but you still have insurance that's going to come due every six months. And then for the people that don't know the difference in the nuance is when you're paying your mortgage, they take a piece of that in escrow to pay your property taxes and to pay your insurance. They take a piece of it every month to put an escrow to pay it at the end of the year. When you don't have mortgages anymore. You just have to pay your insurance in full. Now, if you pay off your house and then you go stupid with money thinking that, oh, there's no more payments, you're sad wrong. You can choose to not have insurance if you don't want to. Once you own the house yourself, that's, that's perfectly fine, but you still have that payment. You still have the like, tax liability. And if you live in a place like Texas and you pay off your house, that could be upwards, even for a regular, you know, 1,500 to 2,200 square foot house. That could still be over $10,000 a year that you got to pay in a lump sum unless you uh, do something with the government to go on payment plans. But payments are still coming. Same thing with car insurance. When you pay off your car, you still got to pay car insurance. You still got to pay the maintenance costs. Then you should have more money because you don't have the mortgage. I mean, the, the car payment. But if you do stupid stuff with money, then you're still going to be on the hook for that stuff. So don't think payments just absolutely stop when you become debt-free. 
What Dave Ramsey is trying to do is get you to see that you have more money to make those payments. And then as life goes on, you get older, your income gets lower, and you have less money to make those payments. I mean, hopefully you were doing what Dave Ramsey say and investing 15% of your income and things like that to handle those payments in the future when your income is lower and then there's no pension plans and the only thing you're living on is Social Security. But there's still payments. But the whole debt dynamic between Dave Ramsey and Robert Kiyosaki is different. Uh, but Alex, I'll let you chime in before I go in and get sidebarred here. Yeah, I can see. I mean, I see both points. I understand that, you know, people don't want to be paying those taxes, but it, it seems almost like, and you can speak better for me because your house is paid off, but it almost seems like you just need to pick which which expense you want to have. Do you want to have the taxes or do you want to have the debt? Because if you pay off your house, you're going to have higher taxes because you can't reduce that cost from, you know, saying, oh, you paid interest throughout the year. Um and with having with having debt, you actually get to write off the interest payments and things of that sort. Just speaking on the property terms. Um, well, but that that's a misnomer there also. And Dave Ramsey put it best is once you pay off your house, if you do the math on it, the write off that you get for paying interest on the house you live in. Compared to the tax obligation that you will pay to the government, it's less to the government than you will pay in interest or get the write-off. It's way less. So the taxes are cheaper than the interest that you pay? For, for a house that you live in, yes. yes. Because you don't get 100% of, of it like a rental property. You don't get 100% of the property taxes that you pay on your house off written off on taxes. You don't get 100% of the interest that you pay for the house that you live in. That's not how it works. That only works when you're going into the rental space. And then that's the, the nuance between between the two. That's why when Robert Kiyosaki say going to debt, he's talking about going to debt for assets because when you go into debt for assets, everything you do for assets is 100% right off as a tax liability. But it's not the same for a house that you live in. People get that misconception. Oh, yeah, it's a tax right off for a house that you live in. No. The tax right off you get when you when you uh, a house that you live in is for those kids that you that you got running around. You get a little right off there, but trust me, the kids cost way more than the right off you get. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with the interest payments and the taxes. Um so in that aspect, Dave Ramsey is correct. But Everybody want to pit Dave Ramsey against Robert Kiyosaki, but Robert Kiyosaki is talking about buying assets, collecting debt with assets, because that is 100% write-off. The write-off is way more. And then you can write off, and then other people are paying it. Every, other people are buying down that, uh, pushing down that debt. Other people are paying those interest payments that you're getting the tax benefit. All the rehabs and things that you do to a property to bring the value up, is a write-off also. All the repairs you do is a write-off. All the insurance that you do, all the property tax that you pay, all that stuff is a write-off. The only time it wasn't 100% write-off was when uh, Trump was in office and he put the salt cap down to $10,000. So if you had multiple properties, then you just got screwed once you got to that certain level of threshold. And the most people that got, you know, 10000 or more salt tax write-offs is the people that have money. But that's the only time that that will stop. Well, besides that, you get the tax benefit and everything. But it's always that debate of living debt free or living with debt. And it comes down to this. Most people in America, they believe that the older they get, when they get close to retirement age, the lower their income is going to be. And so having lower payments as far as no debt on everything across the board is better for them because they will have less money to spend when they get older. That's what 90, 95% of Americans say. So having no debt makes sense to them. But for that top 5% that believe that their income is still going to rise, even going into retirement, then having debt to offset the taxes that they're going to get charged because tax rates are only going to increase over the years. It makes more sense. 
So that's the reason why you have the top 5% and the rest of the 95%. Because most people in America, their goal is, I'm going to work, 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 work. And then when I get to my retirement years, I'm going to have less money. So I need to eliminate as much debt as I can. Well, some think like that, but that's the, the true uh, idea of it. They're going to make less money. But Social Security will be less than what they made at their job. Pension, if they got that, will be less than they made at their job. If they decided to invest in some 401k and have a little money in the 401k, let's say a couple hundred thousand dollars, that's not income. That's just going to be one lump sum. And if they couldn't control money from year 20 to year 65, what they, what's make you think you, they're going to control that $100,000? They're going to save $100,000, think it lasts forever, blow the money. And so it makes sense for them to be uh, debt free because they ain't going to have the money to make the payments. So that's that's really what the breakdown is of how it all comes down. You're going to make payments anyway, debt free or not. It's just if you plan on having lower income, you need to have the lowest debt possible to have the payments lower. But if you plan on keep making money even in your retirement years and your retirement years income will be higher. If you invest in the asset, then having debt to offset that tax obligation will be optimal. With all that being said, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, share, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.